we were coming back from Hudson, and I uh, don't know who was driving, but we got into a bad car crash, and uh, not south the driveway of a of a by Campbell Sullivan's on our reserve there, and the car hit that driveway and went about 135 feet. The policeman tells me when he took a report at the hospital. I didn't feel like giving a report there in the morning, but he was so big and huge, and I guess I have to give him. And he wanted to know, and he said to me, that Mr. Wilson, you're lucky you're alive today. Stay good day. Welcome, my friends, to The Storyteller, where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. Do you have a story like this where you or someone you love narrowly escaped death? Today you'll hear from an elder who reflects on his drinking days, his car wrecks, and what happened at a church meeting that would change his life forever. I am Frank Wilson. I am from the Pegasus Reserve and I was born here. I'm a Cree Indian. As a young boy, I was growing up with my dad and mom there. They were, they knew the Lord and back there and then I didn't know. So I just lived the life that was just sort of went along with the crowd as a young boy growing up. I went to school and had uh, completed grade six and promoted to grade seven and uh, dad kind of took sick and I had to quit and take the bush. I used to go out logging with Dad, and he had two teams. And uh, we would stay out logging for two weeks at a time. We'd come back. But uh, he trained me how to do all the logging, skidding logs out of the bush, and showed me how to do it. And I was 15 at that time. And uh, just before he died, we got left with all this. And it feels like all the responsibility was left on me with the two teams and the logging. And it was kind of nice that I had a father who took time to train me in the bush. And uh, he loved the Lord. It seems sometimes we young people can get so stubborn. My dad used to pray morning, evening. Then shortly after that, uh, it was what around when I reached 21, 22, then I got married to my wife, who's Florence Wilson. And uh, her name was Florence Spence first. We got married and uh, we started raising children. And before that, I, was, I got along with the wrong kind of guys. I guess start drinking and uh, now and then. But... Uh, as we grew up together, as we got married, we, uh, I start drinking. And I kind of worked on the truck for a while. I worked for about six years on the truck and then about six years for Willichanko and the farm. But while I was doing all this stuff, is um, I got caught on alcohol so bad that I sometimes would leave my wife for about two, three days and get drinking with the guys. And, Many times I would not remember coming back from the hotel and uh, wondered who drove me home. And uh, we, were, we had kids by then, and they were just small little guys, and they were about seven, eight years old, I guess. And they used to go to uh, Sunday school in uh, Dallas Community Gospel Fellowship. And uh, they would come back, and they had VBS, which is called Vacation Bible School on our our reserve, and they used our yard as a place where they can uh, teach children about Christ. Pastor Howard Welch was here at that time, him and Gail, his wife. And uh, I got in to drinking, and we were coming back from Hudson, and I uh, don't know who was driving, but we got into a bad car crash, and... Uh, not so the driveway of a of a by Campbell Sullivan's on our reserve there, and the car hit that driveway and went about 135 feet. The policeman tells me when he took a report at the hospital. I didn't feel like giving a report there in the morning, but he was so big and huge, and I guess I had to give him. And he wanted to know, and he said to me that Mr. Wilson, you're lucky you're alive today, and I just nodded my head 
and he wanted to report. Got out of the hospital. It was okay. Got into a few more crashes. Seems like they couldn't build a car strong enough for me. And uh, one night I got back. Morning I woke up, it was a Sunday morning, and one of my boys came to my bedroom and asked me whether I'd go to church with him. That's one morning I would never forget, I guess, as long as I live. He asked me to come to church, and he was very young, and he was walking out my bedroom door, and I was watching him walk out, and I had a head about 10 feet thick. If anybody knows about drinking, after two or three days of drinking, you know where I'm coming from. But that young fella of mine, I took his advice and I went. But when I went to church, I always made sure I took the back seat. I didn't want to get too acquainted with the pastor or anyone. I just wanted to hear what was there. So I went a few more times, a few more times, and uh, I guess it was about pretty nearly a year, and then I realized that God loved me. And I heard that verse, John 3.16. And when I realized that God loved me, and when you hear that verse and what he's really saying, it really spoke to my heart because it said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. When I think about those verses after I'd leave church, all this bothered me. What if I got killed at the car crash? Where would I be? That always spoke into my heart. And uh, one night, Howard and I were talking. He talked to me outside there and said that, uh, you know, we need to give our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he started pointing out that uh, uh, God loves me and God commanded his love towards us while we were yet sinners. Christ died first. I think I can remember the verse, Romans 5, 8. And then uh, Romans 3, 23 pointed out to me, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I realized that I was a sinner and uh, I needed to get right with Christ. And the more he shared scripture with me, he went to Romans 6, 23. And um, what the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And uh, that's when I realized that God has got a great gift for me, who is Jesus Christ. And he showed me some verses that the Romans, I mean, John chapter 1, verse 12. And uh, he read those verses to me, and uh, the verses go something like this, But as many as received them, to them he gave you power to become the children of God, even to them that believed on his name. So I realized that I had to get my life right with Christ, and, and right there and then we prayed and asked Christ into my life. But I was having problems after that, you know, like I, was, I wasn't really real in my life. Uh, for some reason, there was, a, there was a brokenness there when I gave Christ my life, but there was still a part of me that was giving me problems with what I used to do. Then Howard Welch and those asked me to appreciate for Christ in Arbor. And they, that night I went there. I think there was about, they tell me there was about five, six hundred people. The choir and all that were singing, and Barry Moore was the evangelist at that time. And it uh, seemed like he was just talking to me that night and tore me apart. And he spoke about Christians who were really not dedicating their lives and just living a careless life. And that tore me apart, and I said, Lord, I need you more. Then I asked Jesus Christ to, to forgive me that night. Because, you see, I still had a cigarette problem, and I was always doing it, and I always hid it from the pastor when he'd show up. But that night, coming back, I had no craving whatsoever. Jesus Christ has wiped that all of my life. And uh, I sometimes wonder, you know, how loving God is, and uh, I realize that now, looking at my life now, it's... Uh, from where we are, 
how God has blessed us more, which through drinking I had nothing. All the drinking that I come and done in my life, I look back. My buddies loved me as long as I had the money. But when I was broke, they couldn't care less. When you meet good Christian friends and realize that they love you, they care, and there's a difference there. And I've seen that with Howard and Wells because, you know, I watched those guys for two years after that, really, because when I went to the church, they claim, you know, they love the Lord. I watched that very close. And uh, he was very nice to me. He never criticized me. He just showed me love. He never pointed out what my wrongs were. He just said that, you know, you just keep your eye on the Word of God and grow. And that's how I, I learned to grow. And when I have got a hold of the Bible and started reading it, and I looked up Psalms 40 and come across my mind there, because it kind of fits me. And who I was. Psalms 40 verse 1 says this, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon the rock. He has established my going. He has put a new song in my mouth, and even praises unto God. Many shall see it, and fear and trust in the Lord. I claim those verses. Because that's where Jesus really brought me from, from the horrible pit, up to where I am now. And it's close to about 40 years that I've known Christ. And uh, I look back, I, it's too bad that I let him down. I should have had him from the very first of my life. But I guess we get caught in a world that is so corrupt. And if we don't have the Word of God in our hearts, we can be dragged the wrong way. And that's where I was dragged the wrong way. Looks good out there, but it's hurting. But when you have Christ in your heart, it's peace. And that's a thing that I don't know how to express to anyone, but there's a peace there that God gives a person when you ask Him into your life. How about you? Do you have this peace? True peace can only come when we're right with God when the broken relationship with our Creator has been restored. This was no small matter to God, and it shouldn't be for us either. You see, Jesus suffered and died on the cross for our offenses. He laid down His life so that we could live. He gave Himself for us. How amazing is that? Then God raised Him from the dead so that we could forever be right with Him. Will you trust Him? For those who do, there is true and lasting peace. The Bible says, Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you have this peace? If you would like to know more, please visit our website, withoutreservation.com, and click on the tab, New Life. You can also write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. Want to take The Storyteller with you? Be sure to download our app. Thanks for listening, and remember the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friends, there are more amazing stories to tell, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.